Hello! Welcome to episode 79 of Knits and Stuff. My name is Alicia, and today we'll be talking about finished objects, works in progress, pretty things, and local delights. Um, but first, <laughs> welcome to those of you that are new, and for returning watchers, thanks for coming back. Um, if you haven't already, there's a group in Ravelry that you can join. It's called Knits and Stuff Podcast, um, if Ravelry is accessible for you. And um, I'll put a link in the show notes, which are at knitsandstuffpodcast.com. Um, so with that, let's get started. Um, I have a lot of finished objects to show. I've been on like a finishing kick um, recently, <laughs> so um, I've got some, some goodies. So yeah. So first, finished objects are a pair of socks that have been on the needles for quite some time. Um, and they're finally done. They are the Monkey Socks by Cookie A. They're out of um, Koigu KPPPM in the colorway 704P. Um, I knit them on US 1's 2.25 millimeter needles and um, on some signature DPNs. And yeah, um, I mostly follow the pattern for the size small, uh, but used a fish kiss lips, fish lips, <laughs> kiss heel, um, and I, for some reason, did a twisted rib <laughs> at the top. I forget if that's what, that might have been what the pattern called for. I think I did, um, double twisted. I think I originally, I don't know if I did it on both, actually. I did not. Okay, so I think I, when I did the twisted rib the first sock, I twisted the knit stitches and the purl stitches, um, which is, uh, I guess, knitting through the back loop and purling through the back loop, which is a lot of twisted stitches that took a while. And then I realized I only needed to, to twist the knit stitches, so in the second one I just did that. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and that's pretty much it. They haven't, none of these finished objects have been washed and blocked yet, um, but they will be eventually, or I'll just wear them and then wash them because they're socks. So, um, yeah, so that's first finished object. Okay, and next is something that I think I showed, if not last episode, the episode before, um, but it is the Fiberista Yarn Cozy um, by Ariana Galizzi. Um, these, this is out of Malabrigo, Yarn worsted in the colorways Azul Profundo and Pearl. Um, Azul is the blue and Pearl is the uh, white color. And it is a brioche, um, my first, second, second brioche project, um, first color work brioche. And um, it is, I knit it on US 6s and US 8s, um, 4.0 millimeters and 5.0 millimeter needles, which I think is what the pattern called for. Um, and it's basically a little yarn cozy. You can stick your um, ball of yarn in here and it's like a little sweater <laughs> for your yarn, but it's a good way to practice um, knitting brioche and it's so squishy. Um, it did take a little bit longer to knit I felt like <laughs> because with brioche stitches you are basically like slipping your stitches uh, half the stitches every round so um, it feels like it takes longer to get length um, and yeah so I kind of slowed down a little bit when I got about halfway through <laughs> but eventually finished it off and um, yeah, I think it'll look a little better when it's been blocked because it's a little like mushy right now. Um, but otherwise I really like it and it's very squishy and I just want to keep squishing it because <laughs> it's Malabrigo. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with it. Okay, number three on the finished projects list is another thing that's been on the needles for a while. Um, I think I cast this on sometime after we got back from the UK. Um, because I got this yarn in the UK, and the pattern um, is the English Embroidery Cowl by Miss Lena. Um, the yarn is, I think it's actually, 
<laughs> this way. The yarn is um, the Uncommon Thread BFL Light DK in the colorway Spumoni. And um, I knit this on US 8's 5.0 millimeter. Um, and yeah, this has been, let's see, we went to the UK in 2015? I think, yeah, 2015, and so, um, yeah, I've been working on it. It used to live in a Doctor Who project bag. Um, the yarn was from the UK, and uh, the cowl was called the English Embroidery Cowl, so this was my super English cowl. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's finally done, and um, it also has not been blocked yet, but it still looks pretty good for not being blocked. The ribbing at the bottom, um, because of the cast off, I think I used the super stretchy, um, what is it, Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off, I think, <laughs> or cast off, um, so it's a little bit, like, flared out, um, but I think some blocking will help with that, um, and I'm pretty sure I just used a long tail cast on, um, back, way back when, when I cast this on, <laughs> so yeah. But that's my, my cowl, so I'll have another cowl to add to my collections. Or it'll be a gift, we'll see. But, um, yeah, so that's the cowl. So, speaking of cowls, I have a finished Clementine cowl by Kate Burge and Rachel Price. Um, this is out of Spin Cycle Yarns, um, dyed in the wool, in the colorways Stay Ready and Rusted Rainbow. Um, Stay Ready is the uh, lighter colored yarn, and um, Rusted Rainbow is the ones with the more oranges and a little bit of mint green. Um, I had got this yarn in Seattle, and I think they had a sample of the yarn store there of this pattern, and I really liked it, so I started knitting it. Um, few years ago also <laughs> and um I originally put it down because this this is where I started um I started on this side and I put it down probably around like here-ish I think and I wasn't really feeling the colors as much um and then especially around here uh it's so this is a color work pattern that you don't actually have to do any stranded like, color work knitting on so it's super simple if you're new to knitting with two colors. Um, it's a really good pattern to, to use to get that like color work pop without having to do any stranded knitting. So um, anyway, so I got to, to around here and I was like, oh, these colors, like because of the way the color changes in the yarn, um, they like were blending together, like they hit the same color around the same time and I didn't really like how it looked so I put it down for a little bit but then um wanted to finish it and decided not to, to rip it out and just to keep going um so I picked it back up recently and then just powered through <laughs> and I actually really like the way it looks now um once it's all done it I think as a whole it looks really really nice and it'll be a really nice like fall cowl to wear I'm very excited about it um but yeah, uh, and then, oh yeah, and I knit these on US 6s, 4.0 millimeters, which I think is what the pattern called for, um, on some like interchangeable needles, and pretty much used up for the full skeins of yarn. I think this is all I had left of the um, contrasting color, and then the main color I had a little bit more, um, yeah, I had a little bit more left, but not enough to get one more round. Um, so, yeah. So that's another cowl. Alright, so I didn't realize how many cowls I had <laughs> finished, um, but I have another cowl <laughs> that I finished um, that was also started a while ago. And this is the Forest Park Cowl by Liz Abenante. This is a free pattern. Um, and I knit it out of Fiber Company Tundra in the colorway Taiga. Taiga? And it is not blocked, but I can pretend that it is. <laughs> um, and these, oh my gosh. So for some reason, uh, this is a bulky weight yarn. And I think the pattern 
called for an Aran weight or a worsted weight. Um, so I had knitted, started knitting them on the needles, I think, either the size they called for or like a size up from what the pattern called for. And they were, so I started knitting this bulky yarn on US 8s and it was super tight and, and I was like, I don't think this is working out. Um, so I had put it down, um, I think at the time I put it down because I was like, I don't know if I like the way this looks. And then when I looked at it recently, um, cause I had been going through a lot of my older works in progress and trying to figure out like what I wanted to keep and what I wanted to finish, um, and when I picked it back up, I was like, this is, the gauge is way too tight on this. And, and then realized that the yarn was larger than what the pattern had called for. So I decided to go up a needle size. Um, and I think I went up um, once, tried it, and then it still didn't work. And so I went up to size 10, which is what the yarn, um, the yarn ball band recommended, it, like a size 10 or 11. Um, and it's much better. And I didn't do as many repeats um, around as it called for. So I think the pattern called to cast on like a hundred and something stitches. And so I went down one repeat down to 96 stitches. Um, so yeah, less cables around, but still, um, still follow the pattern. And then I didn't have enough yarn to do the full cable repeats at the bottom here. Um, I think you had to do basically like 10 of these cable, little cables um, and I only did got to do eight and then I ran out of yarn <laughs> um, and then I cast off and that's uh yeah it's a nice little cowl I was afraid that going down a repeat might be um, might make it too small but I think with blocking well it still fits pretty like cozily around um, especially since it's bigger yarn I didn't have to worry too much about um, losing that circumference <laughs> so um but yeah with blocking and then this yarn is also um an alpaca blend I think it'll have some good drape and loosen up a little bit so yeah <laughs> so that's another cowl to add to my collection last finished object <laughs> um I found a pattern the other day um for a destiny ghost um if you have watched the podcast for a while now, um, I mentioned the game Destiny. <laughs> it's a video game on um, console and PC, and I play a lot. <laughs> and there's a character, I guess, um, in uh, in the game that looks like this. <laughs> and so I made um, a little stuffed Destiny ghost. Um, it's basically like your companion that can help you spawn things <laughs> and revive you when you die um lore wise that's yeah that's how it fits into the game um so yeah it's kind of a little robotic creature and um I think the pattern doesn't call for um the little eye this lights up in the game um so I think I might embroider something or put maybe like little felt cutouts to make the eye light up uh, light up <laughs> but I'm not sure yet uh, but I did do a, a few changes um, I did so I knit this out of um, a bunch of different red heart uh, acrylic yarns and some Karen simply soft too I think is the gray um, everything else is red heart and um, knit it on US fives um, which is also what the pattern called for um, US fives and a worsted weight yarn but you can you know, knit it on whatever as long as it, you get a tight enough gauge um, to keep the stuffing in. Uh, and then I, instead of doing um, a chain stitch around, um, I just did a back stitch because it was a little less bulky. And then I made a little border around, um, around the circle here in the middle um, to add a little bit of definition, I guess. Um, and I didn't have to stuff this because it already felt like it was stuffed enough. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, it's my little ghost. Um, and I'll probably make some more. I wanted to make some as gifts for um, the people that I play with. So, yeah. We'll see if I can finish a bunch of these before Christmas. <laughs> uh, 
and they'll probably be in different colors too but um yeah otherwise I really like how it came out um and it's a free pattern so yeah it's so cute <laughs> so that's it for my knitting finished objects but I also have cross stitch finished objects so first I finished um some cross stitch that I think might have been like one of my first ever projects um I got this from a yarn not yarn <laughs> from a cross stitch magazine um it was one of those little free kits that you get and this needs to be um ironed but I finally finished it um it's this cute little uh cat cross stitch there on a, a swing and there are a few mistakes in it um but I think it's still really cute um I was gonna give this as a Christmas gift to um to a family member because she likes cats and so I think I'll have to just iron it and put it in a frame and then it'll be a cute gift but yeah got some cross stitching done so that's exciting and then I have shown this on the podcast before, also a long time ago, um, but it is the Fibery Friends Cross Stitch Sampler um, from Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery, and jeez, uh, I don't know, I must have got this like at least five years ago, but I finally finished this, and it's not... Um, framed properly yet. I think I'm going to get a smaller embroidery hoop to cover it and then I'm going to need to figure out how to what's the best way to kind of um yeah collect all the fabric in the back and make sure that it looks nice and neat but um yeah I am excited that I finally finished this and I have uh like I think two or three other kits from um, frosted pumpkin stitchery so now that this one's done I can start on one of those so I'm sure you'll see that um, in a future future podcast finally on to works in progress <laughs> um, first up I have the weekender by Andrea Mowry um, this is living in the um, Pleister project bag from busy sticks and it's finally um putting on some weight <laughs> it is um if I can get it out I'm on the sleeves um it's out of Madeline Tosh DK twist in the colorway El Greco um which is yarn I got in a sweater club um a few years ago so the body is done um which is kind of hard to see <laughs> now that I'm on the sleeves but I'm knitting the sleeves two at a time um to make them go by a little faster and so I don't have to keep track of where I do the decreases um well I'm still marking them just um just in case but uh yeah so I'm knitting the sleeves two at a time this is on I had to go down needle one needle size um for the whole pattern so um these are on US 8s and then ribbing is on US 7s um so it's 5.0 millimeter and 4.5 millimeter um, and yeah, that's slowly coming along. I've been less motivated to work on the sleeves, um, just cause it's a lot to kind of like move around. <laughs> um, but I think, I don't know, hopefully I'll get this done before, <laughs> before fall. Um, and then I can get to wear it. Uh, I think, I forget what I had, how far I'd been last time, but, um, I actually did two different types of bind offs for this one of them was the tubular was it the tubular cast off um I forget exactly which one so one of them I tried following the pattern and it looked a little wonky and then I tried doing another method that um someone else that had made the weekender had tried um it looks a little less wonky but it also doesn't really follow the same pattern um that a that like the kitchener stitch would um so I don't know I'm <laughs> I have enough yarn um attached to it just in case I decide to rip it out and redo one of them or both of them we'll see it might get fixed with blocking but um I'm not sure but yeah those so those are the bind offs on the neck um where the ribbing is but I don't know either way as long as it looks neat it should be fine um but yeah so that's that's my sweater 
next work in progress is a mohair bed sock. Um, this was inspired by Amy Florence from Stranded Dye Works. And I have one sock done. Um, so this is out of Stranded Dye Works BFL Nylon uh, fingering and mohair silk in the colorway patisserie. Um, it's knit toe up holding two strands or both strands of yarn together. Um, and then uh, it has a gusset and heel. Um, I did not do a fish lips kiss heel this time. <laughs> and um, yeah, and it's on US one and a half, 2.5 millimeter needles. Um, and it fits really nicely. So I am excited about these. I'm on the second pair now, or not pair, second sock <laughs> of the pair. Um, so this is about how far I've gone. And yeah, they're coming along nicely. Um, I like how mindless they are to knit, but yet they still have some interest to them because they're strand, to holding two strands together. Um, and they're so fuzzy. But I cannot wait for these to be done. They're so pretty. Next is um, some another pair of socks. Actually, I actually have a lot of socks on the needles. <laughs> uh, they are the Waiting for Henry socks by Tabitha Gandhi. And try and get them close. <laughs> so I'm only on the first sock. Um, but they are out of Hey Sister Gun Company Geronimo sock um, in the noir kit. Uh, so it's going to be a main black sock with some, uh, kind of peachy and mauve -y, mauve, mauve -y, um, color, contrasting colors. Um, and yeah, and these are on US 1s, 2.25 millimeters, which is what I normally knit my socks on. Um, and the pattern calls for it to be top down, but I'm knitting toe up, which, um, the pattern can be easily adapted to that. So, and I'll probably do a fish lips kiss heel on this too. Um, but yeah, that's living in my silver shed sheet bag. And then I have the um, Hobbit Bofur scarf kit from Sandsboro Yarn um, in Scotland. And it's living in my uh, Nerdbird Makery project bag canvas project bag um and I don't know that I've knit that much since I showed it last um but it's out of Stansboro Fibers Mithril um the colorways are Takahi, Kokako, and Ropo don't know if that's being pronounced correctly <laughs> but um yeah I'm on the second color and there's a whole bunch of different um color sequences <laughs> to um to get through um but it's pretty simple a simple pattern otherwise and um yeah and I'm showing the back side <laughs> but um yeah very mindless knitting so this is nice to pick up um every now and then when I just need to just want to knit like a couple rows and can pick it up and put it down whenever so, oh, and it's on um, US 15, so giant needles, <laughs> 10.0 millimeters. So then we have in um, a little Chicken Boots um, project bag. I forget what these ones were called. Um, but I had some hand spun that was fingering weight yarn, and I realized that I could, um, I think it, it's some merino nylon yarn um, and super wash um, that I spun up the number of years ago <laughs> and I realized that I could make socks out of it so I started a pair of toe-up socks so these are out of um, Pigeon Nerve Studios Superwash Merino Nylon Hand Spun um, I think the colorway was called Digger and there should be I think I came up with almost 400 yards when I spun it up which should be enough for a sock, hopefully. Um, and I'm getting these on US 1s, 2.25 millimeters. They're my signature circulars. Um, and uh, knitting them toe up. Cast on using Judy's Magic Cast On and um, doing a Fish Lips Kiss Heel. Um, and I made these, since I thought the yarn might be a little bit bulkier than, than regular fingering uh, or 
yeah, regular fingering weight or like commercially spun fingering weight yarn. Um, I decided to do 60 stitches around instead of my typical 64. Um, so it's also a little bit narrower. I think I could have gotten away with 64 um, still. So I don't know. <laughs> Either way, I think they'll, they'll fit fine. Um, and then, uh, yeah, otherwise just following a standard vanilla toe-up sock um, with a fish lips kiss heel. And then I'll just do some plain ribbing. I'm almost done with this one. Um, I think I'm just going to knit it so that um, the I'll start the ribbing soon and then I'll just go up to the length of the toe when you fold it in half. <laughs> and then I can start my second sock. Um, and I think because of the way that this yarn is, oh, I should get it to come out a little bit. Um, I might actually, because I like the colors a lot towards the end of the skein, I might start knitting from the outside um, for the second sock. And then also, um, if it turns out that I estimated my yarn, my yardage incorrectly, um, I can always undo some of this um, ribbing to finish off the ribbing of the other sock, if that made sense. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So that is my hand spun sock, and as you can see, I've been working on that a lot more than my other socks. So it's been a lot of fun. So my last work in project is um, kind of something that I had shown before, um, except it was just a gauge swatch. <laughs> and I started knitting um, the Even Star Shawl, and this is out of Pigeon Roof Studios Rustic Silk Lace um, on US. 3, 3.25 signature needles, um, just barely started this, um, I think I finished the setup and now I'm on the first, um, lace repeat, uh, I'm a little nervous <laughs> knitting this because, um, the yarn, if it's unspun, um, it's very easy to pull apart. So I'm hoping that it'll still hold up <laughs> when it's knit up. Um, I had a, the hardest time casting on it because um, you start from the center and have to basically cast on in a circle um, and tighten it. So that was difficult to do in the yarn. But now that I'm knitting it, it's been fine. Uh, <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. I think this eventually I'd like to have this shawl um, as a wedding shawl. <laughs> so um, if I finish it, and if it turns out okay, then yeah, I have no idea once it's done where I'm going to block it because it's going to be pretty large. Um, so, but we'll worry about that when we get there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's my last finish, or not finished objects, um, my last work in progress. So that brings us to pretty things. Um, I got a couple things from a uh, virtual SSK. So SSK is a knitting retreat that um, the Knit Girls uh, put on. They're a podcast, um, video podcast, and um, which I'm sure if you watch this, you probably know who they are. But um, yeah, so they put on a knitting retreat every year. I've never been to one. It's I think it's in Tennessee. Um, but this year, because of COVID, they turned it all virtual. So they had... Um, little promotional videos for all of their, um, ver vendors. And then you could just go, you know, to the vendor's website and pick out some things. And so I found some vendors that were new to me and, um, got some cute things <laughs> from them. So one of them was from Umbacito Fiber. Um, and I got these cute little snack packs and I destroyed the box on one of them. <laughs> but this one is the rainbow um rainbow snack pack yeah i think it's just called rainbow um so they're little mini skein sets and i was thinking of making a um like a marled uh rainbow baby blanket out of this one um if you watch amy florence's stranded dive works podcast um I've been watching too much of it apparently because um, she's been uh, knitting a couple of uh, marled baby blankets now or rainbow blankets and now I really want to make one so um, I don't have any uh, just like undyed or white um, 
yarn to go with this yet, so I'm going to need to figure out. Thinking of spinning some yarn <laughs> to, to hold together with the uh, um, mini skeins to knit up, but um, we'll see. Either that or I'll just get like some fingering weight yarn um, somewhere <laughs> and then hold that together. Or maybe something a little bit bulkier. I was thinking about that too. Because um, I don't know how much yardage or how much I'll get out of the yardage from this um, for a blanket if I'm holding two fingering weights together. I think I might need to go a little bit bigger. But anyway, so this is one of the pretty things that I got. And then um, I got another snack pack from Umbacito Fiber. This one I did not destroy the box. <laughs> um, but this is the light side um, snack pack. And yeah, it's got um, some like purples and pinks and like minty greens and tans. I don't know. <laughs> That's, yeah, got a nice variety of colors. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to knit with these. I'm thinking about um, potentially doing like a, what are they called? <laughs> um, but like a, not really a gradient, but um, just like a multicolored sock uh, out of these because I think that would be kind of fun. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's my pretty things for this month I guess. <laughs> so last um, I think I mentioned I was going to talk about local delights. Um, I don't think I've had a local delights seg segment <laughs> um, in a while uh, but I figured I should throw something in. Um, so with COVID and all the restaurants being closed um, we haven't been able to go to restaurants as much but we have been getting like takeout and every now and then supporting our local restaurants um and not as local <laughs> too uh there's this one boba place by um kind of close to where I work um that I used to go to more often when I worked closer to there <laughs> um but now it's a little bit of a drive um but it's called Boba Bliss and it's this really tasty boba place in Dublin um or like in the Tri Valley area of California the Bay Area <laughs> um and they are similar to Boba Guys, which I have mentioned um, on an episode before, I think, in Local Delights uh, a long time ago also. <laughs> but uh, my favorite drink from them is the um, mango matcha latte. So it's if you've had um, strawberry matcha lattes from Boba Places, uh, it's similar to that, except there's mango puree instead of strawberry puree, and it's delicious. Um, so, yeah, I usually get that from there with oat milk, and it's very good, <laughs> and we might go today. Um, so, yeah, if you're ever in the area, um, it's a good, good, good boba place to try out, and they also have some other drinks that we like. Um, the taro, mashed taro one is really good, and um, the, oh, what is it? it's like a creme brulee one um where there is like a fired torched <laughs> um creme brulee top and so that one is also very tasty and more of a dessert than a drink <laughs> but yeah their drinks are very good um so if you're in the area and looking for a boba place that is one of my go-to's in the tri-valley <laughs> so that is my local delight um and that, I think, brings us to the end of this month's podcast. Um, lots of finished objects this month. I don't think next month will be anywhere near that many unless I go through some even more whips. We'll see. I might have some spinning done soon um, if I can finish up a project that I'm working on. So, um, yeah, more to come on that. But, uh, thank you guys for watching, um, social media stuff. I'm Eliana Knits on Ravelry and Unperfect 529 everywhere else. Um, you can find show notes at knitsandstuffpodcast.com and I will see you guys next month. Um, stay safe and happy knitting. Bye!